Hello, hello, I am back. It's Mary Mancusi with your second installment of the Once and Future Writers Club. Oh, the of my heart. Let's get started. I'm so excited to be back and doing lesson two. This one is going to be about ideas. Um, and I know that there are sort of two types of people in the world. There are people who have like no idea what to write. It's like pulling teeth to come up with a story. And then there's people who have like three billion ideas of what to write and they can't figure out which one to pick because they're so good. All of the ideas are great and they want to do them all. And then there are people in the middle who have exactly the amount of ideas they need and we totally hate them, right? <laughs> I am usually on the side of too many ideas. Um, I could write stories until my death day and then maybe three lifetimes later and I probably wouldn't run out of ideas. And that can be just as frustrating sometimes as not having any idea. Uh, but before we get started, I'm gonna show you my geek thing of the day. Oh, the habits of my heart. My little dragon. Um, she is modeled after Emmy that is in my Scorch series um, and we're gonna talk about Scorch a little bit today but uh, this was made by author Julie Kagawa who is a genius of making these little baby adorable dragons which are so cute I can't stand it. Uh, she gave it to me as a gift when Scorch first came out and it's one of my treasured treasured possessions. I even have a little shrine that she sits on. Uh, with some jewels. Oops, there, yeah, there you go. And, and and evidently a pin that's turned upside down. But um, yeah, so that's my little geek thing of today. Anyway, let's get started with talking about ideas. So um, first I'm going to urge you to always write about things that you like. And I know that sounds really simple, but a lot of people will, instead of that, look at things that are popular. So a few years back, um, with the Hunger Games, let's say, dystopian fiction was really, really popular. And so everyone and their mother wanted to write a dystopian novel because they thought, oh, that's how I'm gonna make all this money. Or a few years before that, it was vampires. Everyone wanted to write the next Twilight, which was a really popular vampire book. And um, there were, hundreds and hundreds of different vampire series. I actually wrote one of them. I wrote a series called Boys That Bite, the Blood Coven Vampire series, and there were eight books in that series, and I loved it because I love vampires. And so for me, it was one of those things where something that I already loved became popular, and I was able to capitalize that on that and write books about it. But what if I hated vampires? What if I was like, Vampires are so disgusting and gross, they like suck blood and all that and I don't even like them, but I'm gonna write a book about them because everyone wants to read them and I wanna make a million dollars. And what if that book was successful? Then for like the next 10 years, you'd be stuck writing something you hated. And let me tell you right now, there are a lot better ways to make money than um, write books. So you have to enjoy it. So, you know, whether it's a school assignment, whether you're deciding to write a book or a short story or poem or whatever, you need to think about things that you relate to, that you like, um, that, you know, are just something that you feel drawn to. Because otherwise, it's going to be a long slog to get through the assignment. So how do you decide what you like? Well, I think the best, easiest way to do it is to make a list. Just free write this list. In fact, give yourself like five minutes. Um, I can wait <laughs> if you wanna do it right now. Pause the video and just grab a piece of paper and write a bunch of things that you like. And it doesn't have to be story ideas. I mean, I'm just saying like, I like snowboarding. I like going dancing. I like traveling. I like vampires. I like zombies. I like video games. I like books about the apocalypse. I like dystopias. Um, do a f just huge, huge list and don't think about it too hard. Just write down the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay? I'm going to wait. Pause. Um, okay, so now that you have your list, one way to start, get started on an idea is to take those things pick a couple of them and try to mash them together. And if they make no sense together, sometimes that's the best way to get the juices flowing. You know, like um, two things that just don't go together, pull them together and try to imagine that as a story. 
So, for example, I'm going to give you the story of how I came up with the idea for the book Scorched, which is my um, dragon series. And this isn't like your normal dragon series where it takes place in a fantasy kingdom. I loved those kind of stories. I grew up on those kind of stories. But um, when I wanted to write one, I said, well, it's already been done. There are a billion fantasy stories involving dragons, and I wanted to do something different. So I thought about some of the other things I love. Uh, one of the things I love is time travel. You can see I'm wearing my Doctor Who, Who TARDIS shirt even right now. Um, and I love the movie Terminator. Now, Terminator is a really cool movie, and it's not just because of all the, you know, robot action and all that. What I really love about Terminator is the idea that they go back in time to try to stop something from happening to change their future. And it brings up the question of whether, you know, there is destiny involved or if we have free will. So if we change something in the past, will we be able to change our own future or is it set in stone? So no matter what we do in the past, is it always going to be the same? So that was a kind of question I wanted to play with uh, with the Scorch series. But I said, you know, Terminator has been done. The Skynet apocalypse has been done. That is already a, a movie and a successful chain of movies. I don't want to do the same thing. So I had to figure out something else. Something that happened in the future that was so bad that we had to come back in time to stop it, even if it was going to be difficult. And so I thought about something else I like. So I like time travel. I love dragons. Like I said before, I grew up reading stories of fantasy dragons. And dragons are so cool. They're like majestic and gorgeous and beautiful. And they can commune with people in a lot of the stories. But they're also super dangerous in the wrong hands. They breathe fire. They can destroy things. They can eat people. I mean, they're a, they could be a big bad guy. So I said, okay, so in the future, there's a dragon apocalypse. It's destroyed the world. They have to come back in time to save it. And so then, at that point, I had to come up with a setting. And we're going to do a whole video about setting, but I'll tell you really briefly. Um, originally, the story was going to be set in New York City, and that was where the Dragon Apocalypse was going to start. But I got to thinking about it as I was writing, and I said, you know, it would be more interesting maybe to do it in a place that would be unexpected and somewhere that I love, which is, of course, Texas, where I live. Um, and if you know, there's always the jokes too. I always joke about these in school visits, but um, you know, everything is always bigger in Texas, just like dragons. And you don't mess with Texas, just like you wouldn't want to mess with the dragon. Okay, those are the bad jokes of the video. I promise it gets better from here on out. Um, so yeah, so I thought, okay, now I have three things. I have Terminator time travel, I have dragons, and I have Texas. And taking those three things that I love, I mashed them together and created something completely new. I'm going to give you the pitch that I gave to my editor uh, when I decided to write this book, okay? In the beginning, I told her, there was a dragon apocalypse, and it was devastating. I mean, mankind has been almost obliterated. They're living underground. They're barely surviving. Uh, the government says, we got to do something about this. We can't go on. So we have the ability to send someone back in time to where the first egg, the first dragon egg, has been unearthed from a melting glacier and is about to hatch, and it will spark this whole thing. If we send a dragon hunter back in time to destroy this egg, then we can stop everything. If there are no dragons, there's no dragons in our future, right? So it works out for everyone. Well, unbeknownst to them at the same time, Connor, the dragon hunter's brother, Caleb, who's sort of the bad seed of the family, he joined a dragon animal rights group called um, the Draken. They're sort of like PETA for dragons. And so they go back in time too, but their mission is completely different. They believe if you can save the egg, if you can raise the dragon right, we know so much more about dragons now. We know how to raise them and to treat them with respect and not clone them and use them as weapons as they did the first time around. Maybe if we could take that egg and raise it and raise the dragon right, dragons can actually help us. They have all these gifts that can help mankind if they were our friends. So now the girl, Trinity, our star that's on the cover, she's from Texas, and she's just an ordinary teenage girl who knows nothing about the apocalypse or anything crazy. And her grandfather comes into possession of the egg, and the government attacks their museum and uh, tries to steal it. And she runs off in possession of the egg, and she has these two twin brothers telling her opposite things to do and saying if she makes a wrong move, then she will destroy the world. So you can see, I took lots of different things that I loved um, that already exist, and I mashed them up into something completely original and new. And that was how I started the Scorch series, and it kind of went on from there. 
Um, so I, I definitely think that's something you can try to do with things that you love. You know, I've written books about snowboarding. I've written books about video games. Um, I've written lots and lots of time travel books because I just love time travel. The Camelot Code, which is my next book coming out, is about King Arthur time traveling uh, because I love Arthurian legend. So take some things you like, mash them together, and see what you come up with. And if you don't like it, if it doesn't work, then just toss it out. You can always come up with more ideas. Take two new things and mash them together. Um, all right, so that is a little bit about how I, you know, start coming up with ideas. And so I want you to do a little homework assignment this time. I want you to write a list of things you love. And I want you to come up with a story idea based on two of those things and putting them together. Even if it's ridiculous. Even if it doesn't make any sense. Even if it would be hilarious if those things went together. That's okay. It'll start your brain thinking about story. How you can take things and create a story out of them. So. That is our lesson for today. Um, I'm going to come back with more uh, probably early next week or later this week. I think um, the next thing I'm going to talk a little bit about is characters because you can't really start your story until you know who's going to be in your story. Uh, we'll also be talking about setting, where to place your story, a little bit more about that. But for now, I hope you come up with some awesome story ideas that we can keep going with. And um, I'm going to give out a little prize this time. I have a uh, button. Um, a pin that says I am a once and future geek it's part of my Camelot code uh, campaign and I will give you a signed postcard of the Camelot code my upcoming book so all you have to do is um, like this video and subscribe to my channel and I and I maybe put a comment and I will pick the winner and you have a good chance at this point because I am just starting these videos so I haven't advertised them yet so there won't be a lot of people looking at them for a while so um, if you want to win definitely enter and uh, other than that I'm gonna see you t uh, in a couple days for the next episode of the Once in Future Writers Club oh, the habits of my heart. I